This is Floss Weekly. I'm Doc Searles. And this week, Catherine Druckmann and I talk with Martin Shoshich of the WASP language, which he and his brother and a small cohort of enthusiastic developers have come up with. We think it has enormous potential. And that's coming up next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Floss Weekly, episode 634, recorded Wednesday, June 16th, 2021. Web Development with Wasp. This episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by Udacity. Gain in-demand tech skills in as little as three months with Udacity's part-time online tech courses. Visit udacity.com slash twit and get 75% off any program with code TWIT75. The offer ends on June 30th, 2021. Hello again. Good morning, good evening, or good whatever it is, wherever you are. I am Doc Searles, and this is Floss Weekly. I'm joined this week by Catherine Druckmann. There, there she is, looking good. And uh, you're, you're, my best. You're, you're back in Houston, because I know you left for a bit to enjoy storms and buy a new car and see your mom and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're back. I'm, I'm elsewhere. I'm in... Um, uh, I'm the, the for those of you watching. There's a wall of awards and things like that. I'm in a, a vast conference room at the um, Ostrom Workshop, which is a um, uh, a center at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, where I will be spending more time over the next year. So, getting practice in for that. But it's a great setting. I don't need a fake background for this, <laughs> anyway. So, um, so, so what's what's going on for you, Catherine? Before we jump into the show. <laughs> oh, you know, the same old. <laughs> still yeah. still doing the working. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's uh are we ready to get into the news or is that a little bit later? We'll do that. We'll do that. Actually, let's go ahead okay. and jump. We we've got a bit of a late start. Um so okay. I'll go ahead and uh and 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 uh let everybody know first that uh this episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by Udacity. Udacity offers a unique part-time online education program geared for those who are looking to take their knowledge to the next level with specialized and exciting content. Udacity offers the latest cutting-edge nano-degree programs, many of which are not available anywhere else, such as AI Deep Learning, Flying Car, and Autonomous Flight Engineer, Intro to Self-Driving Cars, Machine Learning Engineer, and Robotics Software Engineer. To create the course content, Udacity partners with industry leaders such as Microsoft, Google, IBM, AWS, and more, and selects team leads at top companies to be instructors. If you love learning and are always looking to know more new tech stuff, Udacity is for you. Udacity can help you master the latest tech skills and techniques. Courses are project-based with active learning that covers cutting-edge technology and lets you test your knowledge. Homework and projects are reviewed by qualified professionals. You have real human feedback and reviews with access to mentors 24-7. Udacity's flexible schedules mean you can put in just 5 to 10 hours a week, working at your own pace, any time of the day or night, and graduate in as little as three months. The World Economic Forum estimates that 75 million jobs will be replaced by automated processes Within the next three years, Udacity prepares its students for the jobs of the future. Over 14 million people in over 240 countries now use Udacity. Check out their detailed course listings at udacity.com. Once you enroll as a student in a specific course offering, you will be prompted to view the online course as well as complete a series of projects and support courses. They offer flexible payment options and you can learn at your own pace and schedule. Udacity also has free courses. Does your team need to master cutting-edge technologies like data science, AI, and cybersecurity? With Udacity for Enterprise, you can upskill your entire workforce with real-world project-based learning. Be sure to check out the Enterprise section of Udacity's website today. So get the in-demand tech skills you need to advance your career. 
Visit udacity.com slash twit and get 75% off any program with code twit75. The offer ends June 30th, 2021. That's udacity.com slash twit and enter twit75. Okay, so welcome again to Floss Weekly. And so we we, ha- we want to visit some news before we visit our guest. Um, uh, so, so Catherine, you actually have something from your home tour, turf with Drupal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Drupal 9.2 came out today. Um, and it's exciting for me, I think, and, and, and for a lot of us because it includes uh, a header that blocks um, Google's Flock feature, the federated uh, learning of cohorts. Um, so I think that's really cool. You know, I think uh, WordPress, I don't know if WordPress has released that's a similar update. I believe Joomla has already. Um, so there's a definite trend here. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's Yeah, I think that, uh, that that flock at this point is pretty much dead in the water. I mean, it, or it should be. Anyway, I'm not fond of it in any case. Um, but uh, but that's, there, there's a, this may or may not be related, but... Um, uh, uh, but there's a story out now that um, that uh, there's no that there people are unhappy <laughs> that that uh-huh. uh, open source yeah. maintainers are stressed out, underpaid, and um, and that's from a survey that uh, uh, that Business Insider has, and it, it's consistent with what I experienced flying here and then flying from the West Coast to the East Coast earlier too. That people in a lot of jobs just aren't happy right now. I don't have a, a link to a story I read, but there's another one that basically says lots of people want to leave their jobs. And um, rather than dwell on that, I, I think it's a subject for a future show, perhaps. Um, but I want to jump ahead to um, to our guest because he may have something to say about it. It's uh, Martin Shoshich of Wasp. Uh, this Wasp uh, dot Lang dot Dev dash Lang dot Dev. Um, for the viewers, you can see, you can see that under un, under his face here when he comes online. There you go. So, so hey, where are hi. you, Martin? Where where are you located on Earth? Hey, hi, Doc. Hi, Kat. It's great to meet you. Uh, mm-hmm. So, I'm located in Croatia, Europe, uh, in the capital oh, Zagreb. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! I, I I see it's still daylight there. It's, this morning we were talking. Yeah, it's still it's still yeah. barely daylight. <laughs> but yeah, it's <laughs> afternoon, but, but still, still daylight. Yeah, I guess for you for you it's early 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 morning, right? Um, I, it sort of I know it's afternoon for me here, uh, and it's just yeah, it's still morning for you, Catherine. Noon. You're in yeah. ah, your sorry. central okay. time. Yeah. Well, normally I'm on the west coast where when it is morning, but but ah, but, you're now in this. But, sorry, I didn't I didn't catch yeah. that. Yeah, makes. So, so, so tell us about Wasp. I mean, it, it's um, it's fairly new. It, it, in fact, your website called it says Wasp Alpha. So, g- give us a background to what got you into it. What motivated you to create this? Sure, sure. Yeah, as you said, Wasp is still pretty early. I mean, uh, maybe I can explain quickly what Wasp is. So, uh, Wasp is a DSL DSL, so domain specific language for developing web apps with less code and uh, best practices. So basically, the, um, what does that mean? That means that uh, Wasp has an interoperability uh, with existing technologies like React, Node, and similar. So developers can still use their favorite technologies, but part of part of the web app they can implement in Wasp, uh, and that should help with you know um, less boilerplate, less configuration, a lot of things done automatically, and so on. So it's kind of like a you could say it's kind of like a web framework. But with a different approach, approach is that it's actually a standalone uh, language, yeah. And how how it all started? Well, um, I mean, be- behind behind Wasp uh, is is me and my brother, my twin brother Matia, uh, and we started about a year and a half ago. Uh, I mean, we have we are both uh, we finished computer science in Croatia. We did um, internships for some bigger companies like Google, Palantir, um, work both abroad and here. I uh, did a lot of actually bioinformatics, uh, algorithms, some machine learning, stuff like that. But at the end, we always ended up building web apps very often. <laughs> so, and uh, we tried different technologies, you know, like Angular, React, Backbone, uh, even just Vanilla and jQuery. And uh, at some point, uh, we, we, we concluded that it's amazingly hard to build, a, you know, like a, a web app that's also scalable, uh, follows best practices and so on. Uh, and that's how we came to idea for for Wasp. Yeah. Okay. So you obviously you 
you're your own earliest adopters, but what are what are what are your early adopters doing, and what are what are typical typical uses at this stage? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I can also talk about. Uh, so basically, we we started working on Wasp more than a year ago, and about half a uh, half a year ago, we launched an alpha. Uh, so with, with Alpha, you can build some, uh, you can actually build web apps. Some features are still missing, some flexibility is missing, and so on. But you can build things like, uh, for example, Medium. Uh, I mean, even something as ambitious as Airbnb and similar. So Wasp is maybe the ideal case for kind of like uh, SaaS applications, software as a service. Uh, we 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 have a Discord community with about 200 uh, people on it. So we we mostly interact with them. Uh, and maybe the most exciting thing was the one of the users used it on a hackathon and actually won a hackathon. So that was yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Mm. Uh, yeah, he used it. We we, we 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 didn't even know. So he somehow managed to get through all the alpha bugs and and make it work. Uh, in his case, it was a CR. It was a it was a platform for connecting connecting farmers and bank bankers. I think something in that direction. Uh, and yeah, uh, people, people, uh, one, one user used it for uh, CRM, uh, of a kind, uh, I know one user was, uh, building something similar to Yelp. So yeah, I mean, in, in, you could really build anything, uh, uh, any kind of web app with it, but mostly it was this kind of more complex business, uh, apps. Interesting. That's, that's ambitious. Huh. So. I'm actually curious about a few things. So, so I like you know I, I went over your documentation a little bit, um, and cool. you you indicate sort of a built-in flexibility, and I'm wondering two things: if you could tell us a little bit more about what you refer to as escape mechanisms, but also have you had to sacrifice any flexibility in order to achieve your your goal of sort of simplicity and and um, and efficiency, I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think it's best if I maybe start from the from the um, DSL part. So what, what does it mean that WASP is a is a standalone language and how that what it means for flexibility and trade-offs and so on? So basically, with WASP experiences, uh, so instead of writing, let's imagine you are normally writing your web app in React and Node, so it is all JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, so with WASP, you will still be write, doing most of that. But you would also, but some, of, but you would also write some WASP code in actual .wasp files, uh, which would capture kind of like a high-level description of the of the web app. So, for example, stuff like I want to authentic authentication with Google. Uh, I have these pages on these routes. Uh, I I have these data models, and so on and so on. Uh, and then the rest is implemented. The details are implemented again in React, Node, and and similar. Uh, so what that what does this mean for flexibility? Um, I mean, basically, it means that since we are capturing some stuff in Wasp, if you don't capture it, if our abstractions are not, uh, let's say, good, a user could, in theory, use some flexibility because, for example, maybe, maybe they can't define a page in the way they want and similar. Maybe they can't can't use some special custom authentication system uh, and similar. Uh, but actually, it's it's the same problem that any web framework like Ruby on Rails or Meteor has. Uh, it is always about you know using correct abstractions. So it's again the, the same thing for Wasp. So I would say same like other ve like web frameworks. Yeah, all web frameworks have some trade-offs. You know they give you more power but remove some of the flexibility. But usually, the flexibility is removed in such uh, smart fashion that you don't really uh, feel it for the for for the m most of the use cases that mm -hmm. it's used for. All right. Um. <laughs> it's funny, I actually. So, I, in in your documentation, I noticed that your uh, your sample project was uh, building a to do list <laughs> that sort of spoke to me. I haven't done it yet, but um, so I'm 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 just you know I, I I you know you said you know it's it's great for a variety of types of apps, but um, I'm just wondering, like for example, you know I'm. You know, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm a longtime Drupaler. I have a, I have a little bit of, I'm embarrassed mm -hmm. to say, tunnel vision. Um, and <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, like, what you would tell me as a as somebody who's very set in their ways <laughs> and doing something a certain way. Um, what what might attract me to Wasp, and what what's a good, let's say, uh, I don't know side project and interest something that that would really hook me in and um, and 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 help me experience what's really great about Wasp as opposed to something else that I may have worked with in the past. Like I'm, I'm wondering if there's something 
specific that I that would really show off its features very well. Sure, sure. No, no. Uh, I mean, right now we are mostly aiming for React and Node.js developers. So, for example, if you are if you're using React and Node, then then the main kind of main uh, main advantage of both would be you know. You can do the same thing, but with less code. So usually, if you're starting starting a React and Node app, uh, there's a lot of configuration, a lot of, for example, you know, you, you need to define a REST API, and you need to define the data models on the backend. Uh, usually, you define, for example, usually you define data models three times, right? Usually, you define it one once in the database during, through the schema. You define them once on the backend as the API, and then you usually model them again uh, on the front end. Uh, so, for, so, 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 for example, with Wasp, you model, you define the data model only once, and then you, you can use it on on all the parts of your of your uh, web app. So, so, so the, the the main I would say the main advantage is you know just just removing all the complexity from the code that you don't want to deal with right now. That's often setting up the project, defining the API, maybe some common uh, like common things like you know implementing authentication that's taken care of. Uh, access control, you know who can, who can access what, uh, stuff like that. I mean, uh, I, I have to admit it has been a long time since I was looking into Drupal. If I if I remember correctly, Drupal is like a CMS, right? Uh, in PHP. It is. It's a, little, a uh, bit more. It's PHP. Yeah, it's a bit more fl flexible, I would say, than merely a CMS. But um, some would describe it as a framework. But um, you know, okay. Drupal developers may not be the the, the ideal uh, people to experiment with Wasp, although we we have. A lot of um, competent JavaScript developers in our community. So, cool. But yeah. Um, I also noticed in your document. Can you tell us about deployment? You mentioned that you're trying to keep deployment as, as simple as possible, and I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about that. Sure. I mean, the the whole idea behind Wasp is kind of to simplify stuff, right? <laughs> so one one part is. Uh, one part which people struggle a lot is deployment, especially if, if the web app is more complex. If you have a backend and frontend and so on, there's a lot of things you need to know to get it working. Even if you're building something simple like a, like a to-do app, so so that is why one of the things we also wanted to tackle was deployment. I mean, uh, right now, so so the vision is to have kind of a one-click deployment. So we just say, you know, deploy Wasp to AWS or GCP. And that's basically it, plus maybe some minor, minor, very minor configuration. Uh, right now, it's it is not yet that simple because we are in alpha, but but it's it's it is kind of uh, it is close to that. We are already already taking care of of a lot a lot of the things. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of uh, about it. I mean, for example, the what what could be very cool in the future, and what we are very excited about is that you know it doesn't really matter how complex. So so, so the whole idea behind Wasp is that you. Uh, so why is it, for example, why is it called Wasp? It's called Wasp because it's uh, it's coming from web app specification. So the idea is that right now you are implementing stuff mostly. You are writing JavaScript code, uh, Python, uh, Java, whatever, right? So it's mostly uh, and most of the how the web web app functions. It's kind of it's written in Turing complete languages, uh, general languages, and so on. So sometimes if you need to figure out which is which is which is pretty complex, like it's a, it's a complex tool for. For 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 maybe to do everything in it, and the idea with Wasp is that uh, the parts you write in Wasp don't look so much like a general programming language. They look more like a specification. So somebody that you know, it's, it's more like a uh, you you telling developer what you want the web app to work like. So it will be something like, hey, I wanted to have these three pages. I wanted to have authentication. Uh, I want in it to have something that's called task, and you know, it should have. Uh, it should have um, a description and it should have a checkbox so you can say yes or no. So it's kind of like that's what we are trying to capture with Wasp. So for example, for deployment, again for us, you know, the, on the maximum level, deployment should come, should be as simple as saying, you know, I want to deploy this to AWS and I want it to behave maybe in certain, in certain way, you know, like. Uh, um, I wanted to use certain uh, strength, uh, in, uh, servers of certain strength, have certain availability and so on. Uh, and we would like users to be available to, to to be able with Wasp to basically type as little information as that and just and just be on the way, have a production ready app that's running. Uh, and then comes the flexibility that you were talking about. So this is of course not enough. This is something that helps people, uh, let's say, get done a lot quickly. But if they need more control, then 
then again, uh, Wasp, Wasp is built uh, and is being built in such a way that you can that you can kind of say, okay, you know, this part I need more control. So you can kind of uh, you can dig in deep and take over the control over the system. So, so I'm wondering. Um, uh, we had a guest on a, a few months back, Hadrian Zbarsha, who um, was from with the Apache Project for many years and spoke about how, in the beginning, um, an idea with Apache, the original web server, or the original popular web server, and an open source one, was uh, that anybody could run their own server, and anybody, and that. Um, Web development essentially was also for individuals. It wasn't just for um, companies and websites and things. So I'm wondering if whether or not it's even worth having a fantasy about somebody like me, for example. Would I? I'm not a developer. I, I several times I thought I'm going to learn a language and I haven't. <laughs> you know, but reading about WASP makes me think. Well, maybe I could if I'm doing something for me. You know, if I'm making. Like if I wanted to do something with contacts and calendars or my health or financial information and put it in a form where I have it on my side of the firewall, but I've got my own kind of website where I can look at this stuff. And I'm wondering if WASP would be good for that kind of thing. I mean, that, uh, that's uh, so WASP, WASP is certainly a step in the direction. Uh, I think it's not it's not yet on the level for, uh, it's hard to say if it will ever be at the level where somebody who can't program can use it but for example uh, why it's a big step in that direction is that so so for us one big deal was uh, in, uh, let's say you are a machine learning developers or maybe you're writing just backend so you kind of you, you know how to program you know may, maybe one language you can use it very well but you don't know all the all the web exp, web app development specifics you know like uh, maybe how to organize front end and back end how to connect them uh, rest and so on but let's say let's say you understand the basics of basics of programming and you, and you can use one language well uh, well for example idea behind wasp is that such person could build a, a whole web app as you described uh, uh, for themselves or or even for production for other people relatively easily because all these complex parts are kind of hidden, uh, hidden away by uh, Wasp. So yeah, uh, so so I would say maybe not. If you can, if you don't know how to program at all, probably not. Uh, but if you know how to program at least somewhat, you are much closer with Wasp to building a proper web app than than uh, than than without it. That that's for sure. And you can also, you will certainly be able to deploy it uh, in your local network. Or so the flexibility around deployment is completely um, is, is completely open. You, you can deploy it wherever you want. Yeah. So, so how many, um, how many? You may have answered this earlier, and I'm sorry if I missed it. Um, how many developers do you have so far working on this? And is it, is it on GitHub or some other place like that? Where sure, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, no, uh, Wasp is on GitHub. Uh, we have about one thousand, one thousand and one hundred stars. Um, we have Discord community of two hundred developers. Uh, we have also we have about I think so yeah I, I know exactly we have ten contributors <laughs> and they are so they're actually now pretty pretty active we have uh, almost every week we have a couple a couple of contributions uh, I would say still still all picking up but but yeah uh, definitely a lot of a lot of stuff is uh, happening uh, it's also we have documentation which is which is I think relatively good uh, especially the tutorial for for building a to do app so I think it's it's um, it shouldn't be too hard to try it out and and uh, get going yeah and right now the, the 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 main team is Matia is my brother and me so so we are doing most of the work and we have uh, contributors helping out uh, building maybe smaller features. Uh, and even some bigger features. Yeah. So, so I'm just wondering: are are you identical twins, or are you fraternal twins? No, <laughs> no sorry, we are not. No, we are uh, we are fraternal twins. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's it. But but we I are, just wondering we are if you're as close as... <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, you know, no, one of you could sorry. sneak out, the other could sneak in, and we wouldn't know the difference. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I just wanted to say, maybe there is like a short, uh, short. Uh, drop in the connection and suddenly another twin takes on uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool huh? yeah no no unfortunately no uh, but we are very close we have been working together we went together to university and we have been working on almost all jobs together so yeah we are really uh, really tight so, so you um 
uh, you said earlier you're an alpha. What what does beta look like? I mean, what's the threshold for beta, and uh, what do you need to go sure. get over to get there? Yeah, I mean, for us, you know, the big uh, let's say the big experiment was this idea of uh, of a DSL of a domain specific language. Uh, so that's something we wanted to, to test out in alpha. Uh, the main concern was really the flexibility. You know, can we can we actually achieve the can we give people all the nice things without removing without doing too big trade offs? Uh, I, th I think we proved to ourselves and I, I think also to others, but the biggest thing was proving it to ourselves that we can. So that's great. Uh, and now the the big next the big next thing for beta is just um, really is really polishing all the all the features. So because now we have a bunch of features which are kind of half done or maybe hard to, uh, hard coded or so on. Uh, and yeah, I think the idea is just to get all those um, in a pretty good shape, and uh, and that would be beta. Uh, and that sounds maybe like 1.0, <laughs> but but I think uh, but then I, I guess the next step would be from beta to 1.0 is just uh, uh, taking care of things like uh, you know security and uh, stability and so on. So so that's that's something we are not we are not focused on yet completely. Uh, so yeah, I think beta would be just you know now, now we have a good, alpha was experimentation, now we have a kind of good idea of the direction, and now beta is just going there um, as fast as we can. Uh, we are hoping to get beta done in let's say next six months, so that would be that would be great. But yeah, you just jumped ahead of my next question. Do you have, you have one there, mm -hmm. Catherine? Sorry. Ah <laughs> uh, no, I um, I you know I wonder. So you mentioned you have your you know your Discord community and you have a, a solid little group of core contributors. I wonder, thinking beyond your project, what would you what would you advise somebody else starting up a similar type of project? You know, somebody else that has a great idea for for a a new framework or a new project and how to get their community going. I wondered if you could talk to us a little bit about your the process and your experience building that initial community. Sure, sure. I mean, there are so many things about starting a new project. I think uh, so. Brother and I, we actually come from the so so. On one on one hand, we have a computer science background, uh, and I think that was our main background until we kind of finished college, university, uh, and basically after that, we, we we also have been active a lot in startups. So we actually had our startup before. We have been uh, consulting some startups. We have even been um, consult associates in uh, Techstars in London. So we have done a lot of startup, let's say, work. Uh, and that that has kind of put our mindset and it, it has kind of directed us into into wishing to do something on our own. So so we have always been hunting for some kind of exciting project that, that, that we could work on and maybe even make a business out of it and so on. Uh, so I would say, you know, like the, the, the very start is just, I mean, one one important one important lesson about I think for me and uh, which we learned on our previous startup also is that whatever you are building it has to be something that's exciting for you, uh, otherwise you will lose the all the passion mm -hmm. and motivation. So the yeah for uh, certainly for for us this is a project that we are very excited about because it also solves our problem, uh, and 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 we think it it could it could uh, bring a lot of value to others, uh, and then when you come to building a community, well it's. I think it's again specific to to a project in in our in our in our case. So in our case, our community is kind of uh, bifolded in the sense that we have uh, on one hand we have web developers, so people who are excited about uh, most of the people who are writing JavaScript, they're excited about using Wasp for their next web application or playing with it for side projects, hackathons, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, we have a bunch of programming language enthusiasts. Uh, so people who are writing their own programming languages uh, or are just excited about it in general, and they, they want to participate in Wasp uh, in, in in developing because uh, Wasp Wasp consists of a compiler, so of compiler which compiles Wasp code into JavaScript. So uh, that is a, an exciting part. And finally, we also have a lot of Haskell developers because we are developing Wasp in Haskell. So which. And Haskell developers mostly overlap with programming language enthusiasts. So yeah, so, so, so I would say we have a lot of a lot of them and also a lot of web uh, web uh, developers. And building a community mostly comes down to to just being present in 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 their communities. You know, being present in web development communities, in Haskell communities, talking with them, also also talking about Wasp, uh, helping wherever you can. And 
uh, and hoping they come, they, they get interested into WASP and join, uh, join your join your community. So for us, it was mostly, you know, we were posting a lot, for example, on, on Hacker News, we are always active on Reddit, um, on some other Discord communities, and so on, yeah. Doc, you look like you have a question. Well, it, it, what happened is that I, I keep a browser open. <laughs> this is probably relevant uh -huh. uh, that has everything on it. In fact, I I segregate um, my work among a different bunch of different browsers, and one of them that I use is Microsoft's Edge. It's one I, I use exclusively, actually, for this show, and it crashed. <laughs> so so I lost that, and I lost the, 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 oh, the no. questions <laughs> I, I was looking at there. But, I mean, so... A question I had, though, was, was for funding and how you support yourself uh, in the course of this. I think um, you won an award early on for something or other. I don't know if the cash is involved in that or not, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering ah. you know, about your own bootstrapping and how that's gone. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, for Matya and me, so basically we, uh, so for the first year, we actually bootstrapped ourselves. Uh, that wasn't super easy, but <laughs> but it was it was fun. Uh, and after one year, we actually so after one year, which was half a year ago, uh, we actually joined Y Combinator. So it is a accelerator for startups in in the USA. I think one of the biggest accelerators. Um, and basically, we just uh, raised our first round of funds. So now we are going to continue uh, fu uh, funding ourselves uh, with that. Yeah, and and the idea is basically now, now to now to push for uh, for beta and then for 1.0, hopefully about in a in a year or so, and see see what happens after that. Yeah, and uh, sorry, actually, I will stop here, and maybe you can ask me more. No, that's uh, th that's good. I think I mean it, it it helps to have a you know kind of a long term vision of the future, and um, it strikes me that you've got a project there that actually has an awful lot of big potential. Um, and, um, so, you know, part of the fantasy for me is when, you know, what do you, what are you guys thinking, you know, three, four, five years out and where, where you stand or how will you cope with big success? If you do get big success, where suddenly, <laughs> you know, people, people speak of, you know, um, you know, there's Linux, Apache, Drupal, all these other things that's, and other languages. I remember when Ruby took off, Ruby was nowhere and all of a sudden Ruby was there and then Rails was there. You know, and and they were nowhere for a long time, or not for a long time, but they were nowhere, and then they were everywhere. And if that's a fantasy sure. or not, and what that looks like. No, no, that's that's certainly a fantasy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I would say Ruby and Rails, for example, is it's uh, they're a big. Um, so we are looking a lot up to them. They they I, so, so most of them, when we talk about WASP with people, a lot of them get excited in the sense of oh like is this Ruby on Rails or, or is this Ruby on Rails for JavaScript or for like next Ruby on Rails right? So, because Ruby on Rails has uh, has created a reputation of of a solution for web development where stuff just works and it's really easy to, to do things and a lot of things are managed for you. So that's certainly the direction WASP WASP wants to go. Uh, but we, we actually want to take it to the next level in the sense that, you know, so Rails is uh, bound to Ruby. Uh, with Wasp, the idea is not to be bound to a specific language. So right now it's just JavaScript, but uh, since you're a standalone language, you could in the future even do things in Python, in Go, and so on. So, so the whole idea is to kind of even mix. You could write one function probably in JavaScript, another function in Go, Depends on what whatever is better for the specific task and so on. So, so, so the whole the whole vision behind Wasp is, for us, it's pretty big. Uh, that's that's also why it's called Wasp. It's a web web app specification language. So, kind of the idea is to make it a standard standard language for defining uh, for defining web web applications. I mean, for example, uh, also Wasp is a DSL, right? So it's a domain specific language, uh, and very popular domain specific langu languages are HTML and CSS. Uh, so they are, but all, uh, each of them is taking care of their own, let's say, part of, of you know, implementing a web app. And vo uh, the same idea is with Wasp. So Wasp is kind of the, the role of Wasp is to be more like a top level thing that unites all the all the smaller parts that make a, that make a web app. Uh, so yeah, the the oh, I think I almost I kind of forgot <laughs> the initial question. I know it was about the big vision, uh, but yeah. Uh, and I, oh, sorry, I, I remember now. You asked about great success. No idea. We are taking step by step, and we are, you know, we are still super excited about, about all the success we made so far. Uh, I would say we are still 
uh, you know, it's always like, uh, I remember half a year ago, Brandon and I were talking, or maybe a little bit longer, uh, more ago, we were discussing how it will be amazing when we get 100 GitHub stars, how that sounds impossible. <laughs> uh, and then we got to 100 GitHub stars, and then, then it was like, oh, well, now it doesn't sound so so terrible, right? That was too easy. But now 2,000 sounds very hard, and now we are at 2,000, 1,000. Uh, so always, yeah. Uh, I would say the point we are at right now sounded impossible to me before, uh, and I'm still in shock that we are even here. So, <laughs> so yeah, let's, and, and, and I'm sure I will be in shock again when we reach the next, the next milestone. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm curious about the the learning curve. We we touched on it a little bit earlier, but I wondered if you could go into a little bit um, more specifically as a developer who's maybe used to a different language, not necessarily as a complete beginner, but you know, what are the major hurdles that that I'm going to face getting getting up to speed? And 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 you know, is there anything that you could say to give words of encouragement to get over them? <laughs> sure, sure. Don't be afraid. No, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, basically, the that that's a question we actually get a lot, uh, and I think that's also a concern that that many developers have. Uh, that is actually, so, so, so I mean, uh, actually learning Wasp is very easy because you're not really le le learning a language. It's, it's not a complex language. It's a very simple language, not complex at all, like uh, JavaScript or, or any other general Turing complete programming language. So it's, it's more like JSON. It's kind of like JSON, which has some web app specific, mm -hmm. specific things. Uh, so it's, so it's actually super simple and, uh, and that's mostly it because you're still writing most of your so like if you need to write some kind of business logic you know like some, some kind of function that takes some inputs and outputs and so on you're still doing you're still doing that in javascript so so you're still sticking to your favorite language which you know and while developing a wasp app i think you, you will be spending probably like 80 percent or 90 percent of your time in your in your language of choice like javascript uh only about 10 percent or so will, will be spent in wasp and that will not be uh, that will be uh, the easier part. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it's really easy. It's really easy to learn. So, so I have a, a, a question. That the only language I learned anything of uh, actually was JavaScript, and it was in a journalism class cool. a few years ago, because there's a realization in in graduate school journalism that an awful lot of what one would be covering was data and had to do with data and. Um, especially if you're taking in data from multiple places and you're trying to integrate it. And, um, and like you did, there was a project where uh, there were some public forms of data that were available and the students were asked to do some things with it and turn it into a story or something like that. Uh, it struck me that JavaScript wasn't that hard to learn, at least at, at a certain basic level. Um, but what I'm thinking with, with WASP is it is it the kind of thing that would be taught in a class? Like, you know, even if it's not a computer science class, say if somebody already is in a discipline where they need to know some JavaScript, uh, and it could be taught it could be taught in a school. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I actually think WASP is so simple that it shouldn't be taught in school. <laughs> I think it's oh, actually wow. too simple. Uh, WASP is, uh, I mean, WASP is more like uh, WASP is more like a tool that you just pick up on the side to get things done. Uh, it's hard, it's harder. I mean, f you said JavaScript it wasn't, wasn't so hard to learn, right? Which, which makes sense. It's, I mean, uh, maybe it depends on the person, but I think there's a huge, there's a huge gap in person learning the basics of language and then being able to actually make a web app. It's like a huge, it's a huge gap because there is so much more to, to than just learning a language. Uh, I mean, you actually need to learn like five languages, HTML, CSS, Java, maybe just JavaScript if you're lucky, if there is nothing else on the backend. Back uh, but it's much more, it's about all the concepts, uh, about what is API, uh, what kind of messages are being sent, um, uh, how to implement something like authentication, uh, 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 what is even a page, uh, how does page behave, uh, should a certain piece of logic be um, uh, be performing on the server or on on the in the browser. Uh, uh, so there is so many things that that are beyond just learning a language, and those are I think those are the hardest parts after you you you, you, you after you learn the language, and those are also the parts that Wasp tries to to kind to kind of remove, and at least remove as much as possible. So all those industry specific um, specific parts. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm, uh, it's interesting that you, that you were learning JavaScript. Uh, that's uh, I would probably assume Python would be cool for data. Although, I mean, by the way, uh, my JavaScript for me is also a language of choice recently for, for all the smaller jobs. Uh, because it's just so ubiquitous. It's both on front end, on back end. It's just uh, every, everywhere. So. So, Catherine, you were wondering something on the black back channel. So, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, no, I was just thinking, you know, maybe we could, you know, take the conversation beyond the walls of your of your own project. And, you know, I'm wondering, you know, when you're not working on on WASP and and evangelizing and, and improving, um, you know, what do you, what do you get excited about, you know, in terms of the broader web? Sure, sure. I mean. Um we could even speak, uh, of course, broader than than, than web. <laughs> I mean, now the problem is, go is, is going to be, if I'm going to be talking about web, I will come back to Wasp. <laughs> but sure. <laughs> Fair I enough. Mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, for, for me personally, since I'm, uh, I, I consider myself to be, let's say, a generalist in, in sense of, a, of programming. I, I use multiple languages in, in my career so far. I have been doing a lot of web development, but I consider, consider myself more like a, a generalist developer. Uh, so what I'm mo most excited about is mostly solutions that make it easier for for any developer to approach a specific, um, let's say, niche. You know, so for example, if you want to do machine learning, uh, then I'm super excited about about uh, solutions that make it easy for non machine de non machine learning developer to do something with machine learning. And and I think same is for same is for for web. Uh, yes, Wasp is part of that, <laughs> but there are a ton of actually. Uh, I, I I think like in the last couple of years, there has been a trend of of uh, these kind of solutions that are trying to simplify simplify things. Uh, probably because because things became much more complex in the last five or ten years with uh, with with uh, with kind of logic moving moving away from just server to uh, in big part to the client to the browser. So b b before apps are much more executing just on the server side. Uh, and then with big fat client applications, you know, which came with Angular and React and similar frameworks, a lot of logic moved to the front end. And now you have this situation where you have two pretty big complex, two pretty complex um, apps, back end and front end, which need to communicate. Uh, so a lot, lot of complexity has been happening there. And of course, a lot of solutions are coming, including Wasp, to kind of try to reduce that uh, complexity. I mean, some, uh, some of the exciting ones for me, I mean, ex uh, exciting one is certainly Meteor. Uh, Meteor JS, they're also a big. Um, we are big. Uh, we are looking up to them, also next to Ruby and Rails, because they. I think they were kind of the most most successful solution in that in that direction. So, so, so Meteor enabled developers to write web apps in JavaScript in a very simple fashion. Uh, now, kind of, I think recently they kind of declined in, declined in popularity, but they 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 did amazing things. Uh, and now you also have solutions like uh, Next. Next.js, uh, Gatsby, they are they are doing amazing things for you know if you need to build a maybe some simpler web app with a lot of static content, uh, maybe some more complex blog or, or, or uh, some kind of custom web shop or similar, uh, then they actually offer offer um, very nice and easy ways to also build stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that, that that would be in the in the web uh, in the web development direction. Uh, we can also talk about, of course about other things, uh, but. I don't want to go sure. astray too, well, too far. Know, no, no, that's great. I'd love to go astray. Um, so one of the things that you <laughs> sure. mentioned is, is simplifying complex tasks for people who are not necessarily experts in whatever given area. Um, I think, you know, something that I think about a lot, and actually Doc and I have this conversation, not necessarily here, but, um, you know, increasingly it's, it, the world is a scary, <laughs> scary place, right? And uh, online security, web security, that sort of thing is a more and more relevant topic to everyone and including novices and any, or even experts in peripheral areas. And I wonder if you had any thoughts on um, simplifying security for, to make the rest of us a little bit more competent in the field, I guess. Is is that something that can be simplified, or you know, are there are there tools that that would allow um, security novices to become safer? Yeah, sorry, I actually have a fresh fresh install of Arch Linux, so uh, if there are some problems, they usually come from from there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so 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 the question was uh, the question was uh, basically about the security and uh, how can we 
how can we maybe we are there any tools that, that can help us with ensure security uh, probably also in web development so 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 I would say the the, the main mistakes with with uh, they're made in security. I, I can maybe mostly talk about uh, web app development happen uh, not because security is hard or because because it's hard to figure out what to do. It's because you often just developers are often uh, it, it happens that you overlook some best practices. Uh, and that's basically it. That is that is that is where, where mistakes happen. I think just if you're able to follow the best practices, uh, then you will mostly have you, you will mostly cover uh, main parts. But of course, that that, that, that is not so easy. You know, uh, usually what you're building is somewhat is custom. Uh, there are deadlines. Uh, you are in a hurry. Uh, and now I will take it again to Wasp. But it, this is not not just for Wasp. I think it's for any tool that kind of simplifies things. Uh, I think so. I don't think it's that important. Uh, I would say the first step is not using a maybe tool that is specific for security. It is just using tool that removes as much uh, work from you as possible. So, for example, if you're using, using Wasp, then there is a lot of things that are going to be implemented for you. For example, uh, authentication is taken care of, and authentication is certainly a part where security is uh, is 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 is, um, is touched uh, very heavily. Uh, also, if you are defining, uh, for example, a REST API. You need, to, you, need, you need to ensure to, 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 to correctly define the access permissions. Uh, you need to make sure, you know, if you get an error on the server that you don't, when you report it, that you don't leak any sensitive data. Uh, so ideally, you wouldn't need, ideally, you would be in a situation where you're where, where you using tools that already kind of put best, best practices in there for you. So you, can't, so you can't so easily shoot yourself in the foot. And uh, solutions like that are web frameworks and at the end, uh, Wasp. So... You could say that some bit of flexibility is maybe removed, right, with, with any with any solution that kind of that does things for you. But it also means that there is much less opportunities to make mistakes. Uh, so yeah, uh, certainly one big big things for us with Wasp is that uh, it should help. You know, even if you don't know that, that, that much about security, uh, I think we, uh, we can confidently say that your web, your web app will be much more secure than if you were doing it uh, alone. That's great. Yeah, so I, I um, related to security, security and privacy often go together, but it seems to me as a journalist covering things on the web um, that there are two conflicting um, imperatives going on in web development right now, especially with commercial websites. One is, on the one hand, to provide as much privacy or choices about privacy as possible and on the other, to basically violate the GDPR as much as possible without actually violating it, right? So, uh, and there's a massive industry in that, in, in, in bringing in one trust or some other company that's going to put the, uh, put the, the, the cookie gauntlet in front of the website. So in small print, it says you can select them, you know, opt out of everything here or in large print, accept this. And I'm wondering if that, First, if if that's something that WASP developers are dealing with in the course of their work, or is this something you're in particular caring about in looking at how WASP gets used, or just in caring about the web in general? No, that that's a very very interesting question. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, we we haven't really we haven't really touched that yet with WASP. So, so Wasp is kind of not taking care of that at all. It's, it's completely left to developers to do it on their own. Uh, but I think it would be very interesting to also handle this in Wasp. Uh, probably not in the sense that we enforce how it should be done, but at least in the sense that we recommend some solutions how, how, uh, how this could be uh, how this could be done. I mean, um, I, th I would say our philosophy. Uh, there is also a trend, you know, in in, in development in general. Uh, there is this, uh, let's say, fight between between opinionated approach and not opi non, non opinionated approach, right? So it means how much a certain how much a certain solution, web framework, uh, programming language, how much does it force users to do things their way, and how much does it let them do things uh, how they want. Uh, with Wasp, we are actually trying to take more of an opinionated way, which means we try. We are not forcing people. We are trying to, uh, as Kate mentioned at the beginning, at the beginning, we are uh, we are making sure to have this escape mechanism so you can still do your own things. But we are really trying to push you forward toward whatever we think is the, is the best solution for. So, so I think it will be very very interesting to also tackle tackle that part as you mentioned with you know with uh, the, G, the the GDPRs and so on, security. I mean. 
one one rule that we kind of use so one one rule that we use to decide if we can if something gets put into if something becomes a feature in wasp or not is if it, is if it is general enough and if it is relatively if it can be described uh Declaratively, so let's say almost like in a, in in a, in, a, in a human language. Uh, so I think in the future, if, if we define some kind of, if we see some general case here that we can extract and put it as a feature in Wasp, where you will maybe you know uh, say something, you know, I want like strong GDPR or or or, or I want uh, I want to follow certain guidelines, then it would be cool if that is something that immediately gets. Uh, is something that, that is immediately done uh, done done for developers, but I, but I would say that is still a very big question. Uh, it's hard to answer right now for me. Well, uh, we're getting uh, toward toward the end of the show where we um, we have a, a series of, of uh, brief questions we ask that uh, uh, to, to close out. And uh, the first is: Are there any questions we haven't asked that you would like us to have asked? Uh, sure. I mean. I think we covered everything pretty well. Uh, I would say, what, like what 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 Mattia and D, V and I think a lot of our people in our community are most most excited about is this idea of was being a language, and that opening some uh, amazing capabilities in the future. Uh, mostly things that I talked about, like you know, using multiple programming languages in the same project, uh, and and uh, being independent of you know specific programming language of of and and even architecture behind it so so that's that's something i'm excited to emphasize i guess uh and i also have to say um uh that that we are actually excited that we picked uh, so we picked haskell as a programming language for implementing uh for implementing wasp uh big parts are in javascript just to be very, very direct but but the very core the compiler is implemented in haskell uh and i have to say we are very grateful to haskell community uh for all the support, uh, it was it was kind of a big choice for us. It's not a very mainstream language, uh, uh, but I would say we are very very happy. And it's kind of it's kind of it's it's very good for this kind of use cases for for compilers and and maybe more uh, bigger complex more complex projects. So that is something uh, something we are very excited about. I mean we are so so it is also a very cool thing that we are kind of both present in JavaScript and Haskell community and we get best of the both. Uh, and we get contributors from the both sides, so that's super, super exciting for us. Um, yeah, I think that that would be uh, about it. Yeah, that's, uh, and I think that's interesting to uh, a lot of our audience as well. It puts a, a number of things in context. And another question is, and this is one of our kind of our control question: um, Do you have anything to say about blockchain? <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, well, I mean. In general, I guess, or in Wasp. I mean, uh, so we actually had we actually had a feature request to to uh, for supporting uh, certain blockchain blockchain APIs in in Wasp. I have to say we are not yet exploring that as a direction. It seems kind of far off, but you know we are. Uh, I mean, I, I would say in my mind, uh, I mean, brother brother and I, we kind of you know when blockchain came out, we we we, we investigated it actually kind of kind of uh, quite a bit. Uh, I, I will say I'm certainly excited about it, about all the potential it could have, uh, but I'm still very interested to see. You know, I'm still I'm still interested to see more practical uh, use cases. Uh, yeah, I will stop there. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, interesting. There's a feature request, um, and and the final two are um, what are, we already know that I guess Arch is your favorite Linux. I don't know if it is or not, but you're using it right now. Um, uh, but what are your favorite tech, text editor and scripting languages? And probably you've already answered that in a way as well, with Wasp itself. Sure, sure. No, no. Uh, yeah. So, so, so the answer will be favorite. Okay, favorite operating system. Yeah, I, I guess Arch Linux. Uh, although I'm also excited recently about NixOS. A lot of people are talking about that. Uh, although it seems like a big step. Uh, I have been on Arch for the last, I think, six years, uh, and sometimes. It's, I love to say Arch keeps me on my edge, so I'm always. <laughs> hmm. it, it, it doesn't let me relax. It's always an opportunity to learn something. Uh, and regarding scripting language and editor, so I'm I'm on Emacs. Uh, mm -hmm. I have been on Emacs for the last seven years. Uh, although I kind of betrayed it a little bit, I'm using Vim key bindings in Emacs, so uh, so so called evil mode. <laughs> so so that's so, so that's one part of it. Uh, by the way, my my brother is on Vim. 
so so we have we have always uh, <laughs> exciting discussions about Emacs versus Vim. I'm trying to convert him. He's trying to convert me, but we are. I, I guess he's doing better. He converted me to Vim key bindings, but I'm still I'm still in Emacs. Uh, and uh, most and scripted language. I mean, actually, I would say the so Wasp is not a scripted language. It's more like a specialized language. So Wasp is that is not a candidate for this. Uh, I will say Haskell, uh, mm-hmm. which might be provocative because. Haskell in its pure form is a strongly typed language compiled and so on, but it also has an interpreter and it can be used as a scripting language. Uh, so I have been using that recently and that was a lot of fun. Uh, but if I'm not using Haskell for scripting, then I usually use Bash. Uh, yeah. Oh, excellent. And we, we had the the originator of Bash on last week, Brian Fox, as a matter of fact. Oh, wow. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, so th- this has been fabulous. We're, the, the, the hour is up, but uh, our interest is not. This has been a terrific hour. And I thank you so much for being on the show. And I hope, I hope, I hope you look back on this and say, remember when I did that show <laughs> and, and, and how far along we were at the time when we were still in alpha. You know, wish you a lot of success. Uh, 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 thank you both, Doc and Kat, for having me. It was, it was uh, great talking with you. Yeah. Likewise. So thanks. So, Catherine, um, I did, we had small technical difficulties in the course of that. There were there were a few mm-hmm. a few audio Simple. glitches, and then in in my case, I had a I had a browser crash, <laughs> and the the one that I used to kind of keep along with with stuff, but got through it, it okay. Yeah, such is the nature of technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so. Um, uh, so, so you learned a bit about WAS. So, so what did. is there a, sort of a summary uh, feeling you have about it as a programmer, which I am not? I'm, well, I'm, re- I'm intrigued by the human readability goal. I think that is fantastic. You know, I, I think anyone who's trying to work on creating solutions to simplify work is, is doing, is, is doing, you know, an, a worthy, worthy thing. So, so to that end, I'm really curious. I, you know, I'd like to, I feel like I will, I'll carve out some time to take it for a spin just because, you know, I feel like it's important to broaden your horizons and learn new things, right? To keep your, your brain functioning at, at optimal uh, condition. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm intrigued. I think it's, I think it's, it's an interesting project and it's a good excuse to force myself to learn, learn a few new things. So uh, anything you want to plug before we go? And uh, oh, <laughs> one sure. of the, I know is, is well, you know, us anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mentioned that Drupal had a new a new release today, and we've also so I during the day every day I work I work uh, on a Drupal distribution called Aquia CMS. We're really proud of it. We've had a we actually just had a new release that that adds some additional shiny features. Um, our goal is really just to make uh, to make improvements to Drupal, make it easier to use, and a little bit more enterprise friendly. But yeah, you know, we're really proud of the work we're doing, and and any excuse to plug that is is uh, well is appreciated. Yeah, and um, and we'll mention that uh, that Catherine and I have a, a podcast that the two of us do as well. So it's a reality two cast dot com, reality two, and and that's a I like the image there because Catherine looks the same and I look much younger. <laughs> Um, which I was, which I wasn't <laughs> when my now late aunt shot the, the picture of me and I had hair and things like that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so so uh, stay tuned for that as well. And and thanks, everybody, for being on Floss Weekly. Um, we'll see you next week. We'll have a great guest then uh, again. I'll be back in New York. Catherine will be in her new car. and uh, and And we'll see you then. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are interested in checking out all things smart home and Internet of Things, then you should check out Smart Tech Today, the podcast I, Micah Sargent, do with my co-host Matthew Casanelli. It's all about the smart home and improving your automations. 